What up friends, Liron here, welcome to another video and we are finally in the long anticipated, well not long anticipated, but questions and answers video, okay? So let's get started. Okay, so I have all the questions here on my phone and I'm just gonna go over them one by one and, and answer them. Um, every question that was asked will be answered, some have been merged because they were very similar, okay? So all of your answers uh, all of your questions will be answered. Uh, one thing uh, I want to mention is that there are a lot of questions and so I will try and go fast through them because I really want to answer all of them. But if you have additional questions or if you didn't uh, make it in this video, uh, you can leave a comment below with the question you have and I'll put it in the next one because I just, just think it's a cool thing to do, okay? So uh, let's get started. So, uh, Uwe asks, were you good at art in school? What inspired you to begin with? So first, just a shout out to Uwe, thank you so much. Uh, he's been with me for a long time and a uh, long time follower and subscriber and you sent me also a few uh, tubes to try out for the paint show and just really uh, encourages me, so thank you so much. I uh, really, really appreciate it. So, uh, if I was good uh, at art in school, well, it's an interesting uh, story. I do remember one art class. We had a few of them in elementary school. Um, after that, I just didn't take anything that has to do with art in schools or in a school environment. Uh, but anyway, in elementary school, I had uh, this art teacher called Martina, and she taught us perspective one, one day. It was one point perspective, and I still remember getting it. Like, as a, I don't know, seven year old or eight year old, I, I remember, like, actually understanding why it works the way it works, while everyone else was just playing around because, you know, it's art class, it's basically vacation for most people. Uh, so it's just a funny memory. I do remember having strong uh, visual perception back then as well. I also remember um, <clears throat> making a lot of drawings in elementary school, also uh, in junior high. And actually, I think I sold like a few Pokemon drawings. Uh, yeah, just a funny uh, little memory. What inspired me to start with was actually I'm, I'm very pragmatic in my approach. I'm very down to earth on the one hand, but I do have the artistic uh, tendencies. So I just thought it would be something good. Uh, a good endeavor to to turn to because I do have a natural gift in it and I think I thought I could make money in it and I enjoy it. So it's like a very down-to-earth approach to it, but that's, that's just the way I work. And I think this is what separates me may maybe from other artists that are a little more detached from some of the things that I care about. Um, so yeah, it's a very sort of lame inspiration story. I was just like, hmm, I love, uh, I love drawing, I love art, I love teaching, so let's go into that field and just see what I can make of it, okay? So, and the second question that he asked is, what do you do with all your work? Do you sell it? I actually just didn't put a lot of effort into selling directly. It's more a byproduct of the other work I do, of the videos and of Instagram and of my courses. Um, I don't really put too much emphasis on selling my, uh, my art at the moment. And honestly, I think I have a long way to go, specifically with watercolor, so uh, yeah. But in any case, if you're interested in uh, buying any of the paintings I share or show, just let me know, leave a comment below. I'm usually willing to, sh to sell most of them, uh, as long as they're not in the sketchbook, because those ones I still don't plan on selling. Uh, so anyway, next question, Adrian, Adrian asks, an expensive art supply that you have bought but you, but you don't use. So that would definitely be the Sennelier uh, La, La Petite Aquarelle uh, that I bought here and I showed you on a video as well. It's just the quality is too low for me. I try, try, try to use it uh, when practicing or when doing just exercises, but it's still, even that is hard for me because I just don't, I'm not impressed with the quality. Of course, it's student grade, it's not artist grade, and I do think I paid way too much for it. Benny asks, what is your favorite aspect of watercolor and what about it have you found difficult? So my favorite aspect is actually the very uh, basic natural characteristic of watercolor, which is the fact it flows. I love the fact that there's a bead and you can continue it and let it run. And I love the fact that you can let two washes run together and that you can still influence things as long as the paint is wet. I just love that aspect. Um, the aspect that I find the most difficult is actually wet and wet. I'm just not yet good at it and I see a lot of watercolor artists on Instagram, many uh, many Russian watercolor artists actually, I think it, it may be like really popular in, in Russia or at least this style, they do tons of wet and wet and their quality is amazing and I see this and I'm like, whoa, this is something I'm still not doing almost at all. Uh, so that would be it. Uh, next up, 
Lady Shadow Seven Nine asks, "How did you get so red?" Uh, so first, uh, thank you. Um, I think it's a basically. A, a, it's funny. I don't. I don't know if you thought I'll answer it, but I'm gonna answer it. Um, I think it's just a combination of life experiences, and I just wrote a few uh, like talking points for it. So I was very shy as a kid. I was. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I was a loner or something like this, but I was just very shy, very quiet not really knowing how to, you know, uh, assert myself. I remember like uh, being in a conversation with a few people and just like looking at them talk and like not knowing when to, you know, to talk myself. It's so funny. Um, so I think that's one thing that shaped me a lot as a kid and as uh, when I was younger. And then the, the next thing is like actually the military service um, and, and just becoming an officer, which was wrapped up in so much work and so many interviews and so many scary situations. Not scary like uh, I was scared for my life, but scary in terms of threatening by other, uh, other people with authority and all of that. And, and also being responsible for other people once I was, I did, uh, went through the, the course. So this was a major part because I was actually responsible for other people. Um, traveling South America also was a very strong experience for me. I've been there for not that long even considered, uh, compared to many Israeli people that are actually traveling for longer periods of time. I was there for about four and a half, five months, something like this. I was in Chile and Peru and Bolivia, Argentina, Brazil. And just the experience of having complete freedom and literally just doing what you want every day together with the responsibility because you're always planning stuff, you're always taking care of this bus here, this ferry there, this attraction here, going to see this. And so it's a lot of responsibilities mixed with complete freedom and just getting to know tons of people with different cultures from different places. Um, I've been to Europe a few times, so I guess you can say that as well, just being exposed to a lot of other people. And one final thing I would say is just the Israeli culture is very warm and very lighthearted. Um, it's like there's, of course, there's so many problems here, just like any other place um, in the world. Well, I say here, but I'm currently in Paris, but you know, in Israel. But the thing is that the people themselves are, uh, they feel a sense of, uh, of familiarity with each other. And so, and even though everyone's from completely different places, my father's from Romania, my mom's originally from Iraq. Uh, so it's a weird combination, but still the Israeli culture is very warm and accepting. Um, and just feels like, you know, it's okay to be open with one another. So I guess that's another aspect that when contrasted with maybe people from other countries can be, uh, can look, uh, you can see the difference. Uh, but yeah, that's my long answer to how I got so red. So thank you again for asking that question. Next one, Walk Michigan asks, uh, what are some of your favorite YouTube channels that you follow regarding art? So there are a few obvious ones like uh, Tio has a great channel, The Mind of Watercolor, Patrick Lee Reeves, I just love his style. Um, so these are the people I follow, also Nitin Singh, which is uh, be has beautiful paintings. I will put, I think, all the links down in the description box. There's also another one that I think is a little less known, which is Tim Wilmot, and I learned so much from his full demonstrations. Um, so just an amazing channel to follow as well. And uh, additionally, I would say like Mark Creeley that does a manga uh, channel. And I just, I grew up on that channel. I used to enjoy watching him while I'm drawing, like listening to him talking while he's drawing, while I'm drawing. It was just so fun for me. Um, so, and, and I got inspired by him actually to start YouTube originally back in the day. My entire uh, plan and motives and everything changed, but I kept the channel and he was the initial reason why I was like, I should do this. Um, so that's very interesting. And just as a side note, I actually am subscribed to many channels. I'm, I'm a really serious consumer specifically on YouTube, but not necessarily of just uh, art channels. So I follow a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of bloggers, things like this, uh, even like some parody channels, fun stuff. So uh, yeah, these would be like the other ones. TC Harrison asks, uh, obviously you paint for pleasure, but I was wondering if you do it for a living too, or just something you do for the love of it. So I definitely paint for pleasure. And as I mentioned earlier, um, I make my money from teaching, from my books, from my uh, courses, and less from actually selling the art itself. Uh, if you're interested, just let me know in the comment, as I mentioned uh, earlier. And again, I honestly think I have huge room for improvement with my watercolor abilities specifically. So I just, I think I could definitely sell and s there are people out there who would love some of my paintings for sure. But I also think I have a lot of room to improve. Um, yeah. NL Rinks asks, 
when you have an artist block or art block, what, uh, what do you do to get over it? Um, and so, first, my imagination sucks. Like, I have the worst imagination ever. I know it's so funny. I paint from reference. That's, that's how I am. I have to look at something. And I know a lot of people can pull things from their imagination or even merge ideas together and they become great uh, concept design artists or things like this or just painters or, or they teach or they do whatever they do. I must have something to look at. That's just the way I function. So for me, it's knowing what I love to paint or draw and then searching for reference for that. So I love, uh, I love city landscapes. I love um, the European architecture, which I will talk about in a few moments. I love um, still life. I started really loving because it's a single object and it's fun to focus on that. I love cars, which I barely get to, to paint, but maybe if I have a rough day, I'll just go for that, you know? So just knowing what I love and then even when I don't feel it, just kind of do it. And the last thing, I lower my expectations significantly. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's one thing like, okay. Um, oops, I accidentally minimized it. Yeah, Anytime asks, um, who are some of your favorite artists or works that you find particularly inspiring? So I would say two modern ones and two more classical ones. Uh, Joseph's Bookwitch and Alvaro Castanet are by far the ones I'm inspired the most because their watercolor style is so beautiful. Joseph Zbukovic has this sense of realistic atmosphere that's just amazing because his paintings don't really, you look at them and it's not reality and you can see it's very loose but it still looks awesome. So, and Alvaro Castaneda with his colors and just bold strokes, I just love it. Um, now, next I have Leonardo da Vinci because I have so much appreciation for his uh, for his dedication to, to the craft itself it amazes me uh, to think that he went so far into his research and, and drawing and art and painting was like a secondary part. He was a man of science and I do see the two um, uh, combined, especially for me that I love the more realistic side of things or, or the more technical side of things. Um, I just love that. And Van Gogh. Uh, I just love his color selection. I always loved his different styles. I actually had an art book of his uh, when I was a kid, so maybe it has something to do with that, just the fact that I love uh, his work. Maybe it got into my mind somehow. Uh, and next, he also ha asks Annie, the same uh, person asks, have you seen, experienced anything uh, that has lit a fire under you creatively in this trip? The architecture. Definitely, the European architecture is one of my favorite things to paint and sketch also, the spontaneous sketching. Um, and also the here in Paris specifically, there's something even more special because it is a bit different from other cities. So definitely I would say the um, architecture, 100%. Um, Nelson Ong asks, are you going to try other mediums such as acrylic or oil paintings? Well, I said it in a comment uh, in the past, but I never said it officially, I think, in a video. I'm actually considering uh, getting into oil painting. I don't know when, I have no idea when I'll, I'll have the time to do it or enough, you know, push to do it, but I think it's gonna happen, like oil painting. I love it <laughs> because you can achieve beautiful, realistic results and it's, it's just so different from watercolor. In some senses, um, I, I don't know if I like it because it feels a bit to me like the, you know, you just build it slowly and you have so much control and, and it's just a lot of the challenges with watercolor disappear. Of course, there are new challenges, but for me, I don't know, I just am curious with the final result, which may make me want to do the painting itself. Okay, so this is it. Uh, Connor Casey asks, if you could pick only one brand of watercolor, what would you pick? Well, I would definitely have a hard choice between Daniel Smith and Schmincke, but then on the other hand, Schmincke sent me some stuff and they were just generally really awesome and Daniel Smith didn't even reply to my email. And so I would go with Schmincke. And also Connor asks, if you could pick only four brushes, what would you select? Well, give me two and I'm ready to go. Just give me two round brushes, size eight and 12, something like this, maybe eight and 14, and I'm good to go. I don't need any, anything else. I don't need flat brushes, don't need any of that stuff. Um, and last question, what are your most frequently used colors on your palette? Ultramarine, French ultramarine, ultramarine finest, it's just all of the ultramarines. I don't know what I have with them, but it's like I eat them. I don't know, they just disappear from my palette. I just, it's my go-to blue. Um, I'm working on, as you've seen uh, recently, on building a new triad, so using more of the, um, 
what was it? The cerulean blue and the magenta and the chromium yellow combination. So you do see some more of that. Just because I keep running out of the same paint, so I get tired of it. So I was like, let's find another trio. Trio, right? I said it correctly this time. Not trio, trio. So I, I said I'll just find a new one. Um, so yeah, that's ultramarine. It just disappears off of my palette. Lisa asks, what made you decide to start thinking for yourself? Well, it's very interesting because I do think I have uh, independent thinking, uh, relatively. Um, so there are a few things, a few interesting things. Actually, I had a really good physics teacher, uh, Moti was his name, and he really taught us to to independently think about things and not just believe everything we hear because usually people are misguided and their information is incorrect sometimes and commercials just try to BS you but he did it in a very very fun and positive way so it really got cut on to me I think and also uh, just being very observant uh, when I was a kid uh, younger because I was uh, a bit shy and uh, self-aware I was very, very observant of other people and I really noticed uh, patterns of behavior and just psychology and things like this. And as a result of that, I was always interested in also understanding what I want and what will be the best for me and what my goals and my ambitions are. And I actually did a lot of work about for that, to, to achieve that clarity. Um, and with this clarity just comes a lot of um, more independent thought and I also think like I, I just going through my notes here I honestly think it's like um, a bit of DNA as well uh, because I'm the kind of person who's extremely optimistic tries to always uh, see the good in other people to sometimes to the extent of a bit uh, naive, naivete I guess um, but but I, I think it's like really good quality I don't I wouldn't um, I wouldn't trade it for anything um, and I really think like life is like an amazing roller coaster and all you have to do is just uh, give it your best and try to make the best and, and most positive impact you can and so all that's left given given these circumstances is to literally figure out what you're all about and then just going for it and for me it's it's exactly what I'm doing right now and, and this is why I, I'm so happy actually uh, about my life at the moment so yeah that's that's I think somehow connects to independent thought. Um, I do think maybe it, it'll take some more uh, inner experimentation and uh, inner questioning to understand uh, more about it, about myself. But it's just something I feel like I had uh, for, the, for the majority of my life. Um, so anyway, this is it. These are all the questions I have for this time. Once again, uh, if you have any questions you want to ask me, let me know in a comment below and I'll put it in the next round. Or if you have a follow-up question or something like this, uh, and also I want to remind you there will be timestamps in the description box so if you want to skip to a specific question uh, feel free to do that you don't have to watch the whole thing if something specific interests you go for that I want to thank you so much I really appreciate all the support that you uh, give me it's, it's just an amazing journey um, I have some really big ambitions for the for the YouTube channel uh, the whole thing of publishing a video every day is just amazing it, it makes me more disciplined and I see a lot of art channels, I, I follow a lot of art channels also as I described, as I explained earlier and none are doing that kind of, I think, not a lot of people do the actual daily, you know, you may get once every two days, which is also amazing, by the way, it's just a matter of choice, but no one really does it on a daily basis as much as I would like to see, and so I just think it's a cool gap to fill. And I think it will just lead to this channel being more successful. And I do have, as I mentioned, the crazy goal. And you did comment the right number uh, that I had in mind. And I'm not going to say it again because I just don't want to. But I do have some crazy numbers in mind. But ultimately, it doesn't matter how many followers I have. What matters is the relationship with the existing followers. So I really appreciate all of your support. And I, I act like the 5,000 followers I currently have is like 500,000 or 5 million. It doesn't matter to me, it's the same thing. The videos are gonna be the same whether I have 5,000, 10,000, 50,000. Well, maybe the quality will improve, but but like the, my eye will stay the same. So yeah, I just wanna thank you. And if you just found out my channel, subscribe to it if you enjoyed this video and, and just check out other videos. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Snapchat. I try to post a lot of processes there, work in progress, things like this, personal updates. Um, and yeah, this is it. Thank you so much. And I will see you again tomorrow.